How did the San Pedro River of several hundred years ago compare to the river that we see today? And how is the American beaver helping the Bureau of Land Management to restore the natural processes of the river? Hi, I'm Judy Phillips from Friends of the San Pedro River. Come with us today as we revisit a little of the river's history and examine how the re-establishment of the beaver, a true keystone species, is helping to restore the animal diversity and the overall health of the environment here in the San Pedro Riparian National Conservation Area of Southeast Arizona. Riparian refers to a habitat that occurs next to fresh water, such as a river. In the 18th century, the upper San Pedro River was a meandering stream with many cienegas or marshes. There were fewer eroded stretches and fewer trees than found today. Wide belts of mesquite occurred along the river in many places. Beaver dams shaped many portions of the river by backing up water and creating ponds. In 1825, a beaver trapper named James Ohio Patty found so many beaver along the lower San Pedro River that he called it the Beaver River. Beaver occurred along the San Pedro River and in many of its tributaries, such as Los Nutrias in Mexico, the Babacamari River, and Aravaipa Creek. In the latter part of the 18th century, a series of events began that produced dramatic changes in the river. Trappers hunted beavers and sold their pelts in the fur trade across America and Europe. Farmers and the operators of stamp mills built dams across the river and diverted water from it. Settlers attempted to eliminate beavers that tried to build dams along the ditches that diverted water from the river. At the end of the 19th century, the combination of drought and severe overgrazing by cattle damaged grasslands in the San Pedro River Valley. Beginning approximately in the late 1870s, a series of floods swept down the San Pedro River and began to erode the banks of the river channel. At some time in the early 20th century, beavers disappeared from the San Pedro River. The federal government acquired the land and asked the Bureau of Land Management, known as the BLM, to manage a portion of the river in 1986. The BLM was required by law not only to protect the resources of the San Pedro River, but also to enhance them. To protect the river, the BLM began to remove cattle, which ate and trampled much of the plant life, contributing to excessive erosion. Photos that were taken when cattle were present, and then after they were removed, show the increase in riparian vegetation and the improved stability of the banks. Later, the BLM and the Arizona Game and Fish Department worked jointly with landowners and the public to reestablish the beaver along the river. The BLM believed that the beaver would be the chief architect in restoring the natural processes of the river. They knew that the beaver would restore the river naturally because the beaver is what is known as a keystone species. Keystone species are animals that improve the habitat not only for themselves but also for many other species of plants and animals. These species then depend on the beaver for their habitat. Beavers widen the strip of riparian vegetation by building dams that create ponds. These ponds provide additional habitats for organisms particularly moisture-dependent animals and plants. Because beaver build dams, they provide sustainable benefits to the riparian habitat. The dams raise the water level and increase the area of land covered by water. This process slows the flow and keeps water in the environment for a longer time. This enables more water to soak into the surrounding soil that helps the river flow longer when droughts occur. This water, in turn, increases the diversity and quantity of life around it. 
more trees and bushes grow, shading the ground and reducing evaporation. These new plants then provide habitat for more insects, which provide food for a greater diversity of birds and mammals. This process creates a richer, healthier web of life or ecosystem. As a keystone species, the beaver is an animal capable of not only modifying its own surroundings, but also improving and sustaining the habitat for other organisms. Because water is so scarce in southeast Arizona, most of the plants and animals near the San Pedro prosper when beaver are present. The extra water maintained by the beaver in one way or another helps supply many an animal's needs. Organisms in the soil are more numerous in wetter soil. These organisms feed larger creatures like crickets and beetles, aquatic insects, fish, turtles, and toads have more aquatic habitat to live in. In turn, snakes that feed on the toads benefit. Birds like egrets, sandpipers, ducks, and herons also take advantage of the greater numbers of plants and animals in and near the water. Because the soil is saturated, more trees like hackberries, walnuts, soapberries, and cottonwoods grow and supply the water needs of insects that eat their leaves. More insects are then available to be eaten by birds that live in the trees. Mammals have plenty to eat too. Squirrels and coati then become food for carnivorous creatures such as coyotes, badgers, bobcats, and mountain lions. All of this improvement of the ecosystem happens because the beaver dams retain more water in our environment for a longer time. While the beaver helps natural flowing river systems in our arid lands, it can also be at odds with humans in areas of North America where water is abundant. Their dams, for example, can back up waters and flood roads. Here in Arizona, beaver can cause problems in our man-made water systems. When the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the BLM decided to reestablish beaver along the San Pedro River, the Arizona Game and Fish Department selected beaver that were causing these kinds of problems. One beaver dam was found clogging up an agricultural canal near the Colorado River. Others were causing problems in a livestock reservoir, while still others caused problems in a sewage treatment plant near Phoenix. The beaver were captured in humane traps, examined, and approved for relocation by veterinarians. They implanted beaver with radio transmitters, then transported and released them into the San Pedro River. The first beaver was released on the 3rd of March, 1999. More beaver were released over the following years, resulting in a total of 16 beaver by 2003. In the first year, one beaver had been tracked to where the San Pedro flows into the Gila River 100 miles to the north. In 2012, it appears that another beaver had traveled south into Mexico, then back into the United States at the base of the Huachuca Mountains 40 miles away. The beaver, which is the world's second largest rodent after South America's capybara, can weigh as much as 100 pounds. More typically, they weigh between 40 and 60 pounds. During the last ice age, a beaver weighing 300 pounds and measuring 8 feet long lived alongside the beaver we know today. Beaver range through much of North America, from the Arctic Circle to the Tropic of Cancer. They may be found living with moose and elk in Canadian spruce woodlands along watercourses. 
and with alligators and otters in cypress swamps and palm jungles along rivers. Beaver have clawed front feet for grasping branches, and they have large rear feet that are webbed and used for swimming, as is their wide, flat, and scaled tail. Their tail is also used to smack the surface of the water as a way of communicating and warning other beaver that a predator is near. Beaver are perhaps best known for the dams they build. Here on the San Pedro, we see dams ranging in size from less than one foot to almost five feet high. The water behind these dams can be backed up for nearly one half mile. The Colorado River pike minnow was reported to live in these ponds in earlier times. Some of these fish were reported to reach three feet long. Nearly all of our San Pedro beaver build their lodges or homes in the riverbanks. The entrances into these lodges are often made underwater to restrict other animals from entering. The entrance is sometimes noticeable along the banks. It looks like a small excavated cave right at the water level. Air holes are made at places along their tunnels away from the water. The entrances and air holes at times are obscured by chewed off branches and debris. This further prevents unwanted visitors. Watch out, these air holes can pose a hazard to people walking on the bank. Not far from the bank lodges, you will usually find slides where the beaver enter and exit the river on their way to feed on trees. Beaver eat bark and a soft layer of tissue called the cambium layer that grows beneath it. Although it may appear that they eat the entire tree, they nod deeper into the trunks only to knock down the trees so they can gain access to the more tender branches and twigs. Beaver are herbivores and eat a variety of plants such as bulrushes and cattails. They also eat twigs and leaves of the seep willows, which are small bushes that grow along the riverbanks. In other parts of North America, they can be seen eating parts of oaks, pines, junipers, and spruce. Beaver eat the leaves, buds, twigs, non-corky bark, roots, acorns, and other fruits of deciduous woody plants, as well as grass. Their digestive system has developed so that they can digest these unusual foods. The favorite trees of beaver on the San Pedro are the Fremont cottonwood and the Gooding willow. The leftover woody branches frequently end up being used to construct their dams or protect their lodge entrances. Beaver have distinct territories. A pair mate for life. A typical family consists of parents, yearlings, and kits. The offspring remain with the families for two to three years until they set out to establish their own territories on a different part of the river. Therefore, a series of dams on the river may belong to the same family group. Beaver numbers are naturally controlled by predators such as mountain lion and bobcat, if these species themselves have not been overhunted. Another limiting factor on the numbers of beavers on the San Pedro River is a lack of water when sections of the river seasonally dry up. The entrance to a beaver bank lodge is then accessible to predators and the beaver no longer has a safe environment in which to live. Today, it is estimated that beaver numbers in the San Pedro Riparian National Conservation Area have grown to over 100. Clear evidence of their activity can be seen on the tributaries feeding the San Pedro River in Mexico to the northern portion of the conservation area. In 2012, a beaver even occupied Bear Creek in the Huachucas, and another ended up in the Santa Cruz watershed seeming to indicate that it may have migrated over land. If you want to see a beaver, remember they are mostly nocturnal. If you are lucky, you might see them at dawn or dusk. Listen for the smacking of their tails as they signal to each other across the ponds. 
and think back in time to when beaver dominated the character of this wonderful river. We should be proud for correcting the errors of the past. Removing the beaver 100 years ago had adverse effects on the river. Today, by bringing this keystone species back, more water stays in the river longer and the plants and animals that return to use this water help increase the health of our very own special, one-of-a-kind place, the San Pedro River of Southeast Arizona. <laughs>